because the Fantastic Four kids thing fits the Cassie Lang thing to me. Yeah, yeah. It's like they, they're pushing this agenda, and it's like, yo, I ain't feeling it. I know what you're trying to do. I know where you're trying to get at. I don't want to go there. Yeah. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Nigerian Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we are faced to talk about a subject that comes off comes up every so often when we get a string of bad films or when we see a bad film what the repercussions of these things may be and a lot of things that happen with the MCU as of late obviously you know Mr. Bob Jake Peck is out and they brought in uh, Bob Iger back they want to get back to the way things were in terms of how they put uh, how much content they put out there with Marvel and they're giving back the, the, the power to the creators. So another change is coming, hopefully back to the way things were, whatever. Right. And so we were waiting for Brian quantum mania to come out because this was supposed to be the beginning of phase five. We saw it, you, you you guys heard our review. And so far the future doesn't look exciting or so interesting as it used to be. Uh, Brian, where do you see now that Quantumania has come and gone? Um, by by Bob, Bob Iger is back. Kevin Feige has uh, has been interviewed and he said some very interesting things about the future. Some of the things that we've said might happen should happen. So far, that they, now they're saying it. What do you think happens now um, after Quantum Mania, and does the future look grim? I say yes. I'm as I'm more concerned than I've ever been about the future of Marvel. I just, you know, they've earned so much goodwill with what they gave us for the first 22 pictures. I mean, averaging a billion dollars over 22 films is, I mean, that's a ludicrous accomplishment. Word. In yo, to, to say that, you'll be averaging a billion dollars. It's still I know. Underrated. <laughs> yeah. But Go Brian, just look at that's 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 why we were we were having these conversations. This movie's gonna make a billion dollars because they were doing that on a lot of their yeah. films, but now yeah. it's like not even a topic of conversation because they're not earning that anymore. No, they're not even close. Um, and and like you know, we've talked about it before. Films like Captain Marvel can get away with you know, being a billion dollar film and not being a great picture when you've got so much momentum. And you are again, you earn the right. You earn the right to make a mistake and still make a lot of money. Yeah. But when you string together some questionable stories, don't expect the audience to sit idly by and just hand over all their money the same way they used to. Yeah. And I think Marvel has made, you know, a series of mistakes, some of which were probably actually by design. I think they've admitted now that phase four had experimentation. We endorsed it. We heartily said, go out and mess around a bit. But quantum mania was supposed to be the return to center. Yeah. We didn't say that. They did. They redid the phases to put Ant-Man 3 in the leadoff position. Kevin Feige went on the promotional circuit and said, okay, we admit it. We were experimenting. We were in the lab. We were trying things. We learned a lot. And now, we're going to give you the real story arc that makes sense, that's contiguous. And we got a movie that kind of wasn't that much different in quality than what we've been getting. <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah. Because that means you're telling me you think this movie is on par with what you did in phases one, two, and three. And the world is telling you you ain't close. That's a major concern and a misread, I think, of the room by the parliament. 
But is it a misread, Brian? Or is it just saying, yes, Lord Feige? You know what I'm saying? Because we can't get, we get in the string of these, Brian. And, and, and listen, we're given, I don't, I wouldn't say that we gave him Wakanda uh, forever a pass. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. Um, and, and, and given what they were up against, we got a good movie. But you can't say the for the rest of these films, Brian. Again, Multiverse of Madness, Thor: Love and Thunder. We were making like Quantumania. We were saying, "Yo, these movies are going to be fantastic. They have the potential to be." They were talking that big talk. Where we talk, we were saying that it was going to be dope. But they were backing us up by saying the things that they were saying. And those movies weren't those things. And, he, and how do I know that? Look at Rotten Tomatoes. How do I know that? Go to the movies. You, you're not seeing people posting up uh, uh, fan reactions in, in the theaters anymore. You know, no. you, you know. so what are we talking about? Look at the box office numbers. Yep. Wakanda Forever not making a billion dollars should have been, there should have been like, that should have been like the Star Trek red alert sound going off inside Disney's halls when that happened. Because that movie was more than good enough to do it. And the hype was certainly there. And the hype was certainly there for these films, Brian, for Multiverse of Man Stole, all of these films. And they have yet to live up to them. So where do we go from here? What do they need to do? Because I'm asking you, Brian, what, what do we need to do okay. now? Here's the other reason. So the other reason I'm very concerned is the calendar that we have. So we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, a pretty reliable property that is reaching its end. I think that will be similar to Wakanda Forever in terms of its test of the box office, right? This is a proven commodity franchise which has made consistently in like the $800 million range at the box office. This is the end, right? In theory, this is the, we're going out with these characters. We're not going to see them again. So if this movie is on par with what James Gunn has given us, it should be critically very well received. It's at the front of the summer box office season, first weekend of May, a prime spot. If this movie can't approach a billion dollars, it kind of tells you that like people are just over Marvel, I think for the time being. And like nothing is really must see for them. Because here's the problem. If that movie doesn't, the movie that's behind it, I think is a huge risk of being a bomb, like a bomb bomb. And that's the Marvels. So that means your 2023 could come and go. If Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is not a billion dollar property, now you're two years in a row with no billion dollar movie and really no movie since No Way Home that kind of grabbed the consciousness of film goers. And now you're going to be entering five years removed from Avengers Endgame. Five years is a long time in Hollywood. Yeah. And that's what I mean by this thing starts to go the other way just as quickly as it started to go up. And I look at what's on the calendar. I'm like, how do you have the confidence right now that Blade, Fantastic Four, how do you have the confidence that those are going to be worthy of Winter Soldier, Iron Man, Black Panther, Original Guardians? How do you have that confidence right now? This is a rumor, this hasn't been confirmed, but that there are introducing some characters from the Fantastic Four lore. And these characters are, I think, you know, much after a lot of their story in the comic books. Uh, we're gonna get perhaps Franklin Wrenches and some other some other character, Valera, is it called? Valeria? Yeah, kids. Yeah. Okay. So we going we going all the way over there. Brian. I sent that picture that I sent you to Tracy, and Tracy said exactly what I was thinking. Disneyfied. Is, that's where we're heading. The Disneyfication of the MCU. 
with them pushing this agenda of the Young Avengers. I don't want to see that. I don't care. And yet y'all pushing it, y'all ramming it down our throats by giving these, these characters who seem not to have a care in the world and they're just nonchalantly being able to do all these things <laughs> and we're supposed to believe it? Tony Stark built this in, <laughs> in a can with a box of scraps. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like come on Brian it's like you're not making anybody special must be a syndrome everyone can be super and when everyone's super <laughs> no one will be no you're, you're definitely playing to the entitlement generation right none of these none of these characters are putting a day's worth of work but they got all the powers and all the shine this is getting out of hand where I don't care about none of these characters. The only characters I care about to see are, from what I can tell, are far, far away from here. Uh, in terms of them bringing them to the screen. When I mentioned Galactus, Silver Surfer, and stuff like that, they haven't even mentioned those things. I'm afraid for the X-Men. Brian, what does what does Marvel have to do to course correct? Right now they're they seem to be in the in the in the in the route of let's go back to the way we used to do things. But people are obviously tired, Brian. I've, this is not the first time I've heard people say, "Oh, I'm done with Marvel." This is not the first time. It's just getting louder and louder, and now you're you're starting to see that fatigue. What do we have to do, Brian? What stories do we have to tell? Well, that's the key. So let, let's start. Let's start. Well, let's start with what they are doing one thing right, which is they are dialing back the calendar. That had to happen. Now, Bob Iger needs to channel a little bit of his inner David Zasloff. He's got to step up and cut some of these projects. Don't delay them. Cut them. If they're not up to snuff and they're not going to propel the the world forward, they got to go. Like, I'm sorry. There's a few of these shows on the calendar in particular where I'm just like, we don't need them. Yeah. We don't need them ever. So now, and I think they kind of, they kind of like are moving that direction because what are the only two shows that they were like, okay, we're sticking with these for 2023. It's Loki yeah. and, and Secret Yes. Congratulations. Yes. You recognize the two shows that you know people want to see. Yeah. And even if like we think we really want to see Daredevil, we'll wait for it. Get it right. You want to do 18 episodes? Get it right. Fix the tone. I'll wait for it. I'm cool with that. Yeah. So delaying stuff is smart. They got to delay it even more. They got to take the film. Like they got to take, if I was them, Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars got to go off the calendar and way back. Why? Because they don't have the heroic lineup to make those movies work. I'm telling you, if they deliver Kang Dynasty in the summer of 2025 with the calendar that I see between now and then, I'm on record south of a billion dollars. And if you got an Avengers movie that can't make a billion dollars, you're done. You Josh yeah. Whedon Justice League time. It's over. Yeah. Like maybe you should be putting that, you know, maybe, maybe you should be putting your Dr. Evil sale of the IP <laughs> clip for Disney instead of Warner Brothers. Nah, I don't but, think that'll happen. No, but, I, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, the reason why I would stretch it out is because you need more time to deliver more heroes that the audience really wants to rally behind. Because that is ultimately what, like, yes, Josh Brolin owned Thanos. But Thanos doesn't work if RDJ, Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Chadwick both. If those guys don't work, Scarlett Johansson, if they don't work, Thanos doesn't work. Yeah. You get the same imbalance. Yeah. So they got to fix the heroes and they've got to get new heroes in the lineup who are written well at people care about. Yeah. Oh, let, let me make one thing clear. If you thought we know that the OGs were coming back for Secret Wars, <laughs> if you didn't think that before, 
you sure as hell going to think that after quantum mania does like 650 or 700 at the box and after we get through this year and they don't have a movie that does a billion if guardians doesn't get there they're going to be writing checks to whatever size is necessary to get every actor from phases one two and three back for secret wars just to make secret wars relevant which is why don't think it's a coincidence that Kevin Feige is dropping Tom Holland's name and Spider-Man 4 all over the place in the promotional tour. Why is he doing that? Because the last movie people actually cared about was No Way Home. Yeah. I am still a proponent of Shang-Chi, but if you want us to care about Shang-Chi as an Avenger, then you should actually put real resources into Shang-Chi 2 and elevating him and making him be the martial artist badass that he's supposed to be. If you do that, if you deliver a movie like that, Shang-Chi will suddenly be relevant and people will want to see Shang-Chi in a grander fight. Right now, it's like that was a nice film that came and went and the character's just kind of on the sidelines with no real credibility. Nope. But I agree with you that Secret Wars is going to reset the MCU when we get there. I'm saying they'd be better off sidelining everyone and just saying like, we don't mention Captain America's name other than like as, you know, in passing. We don't talk about Iron Man. We don't talk about Thor. We wait a decade, and then we relaunch, recast, bring it back. And in the meantime, we've got so many X-Men stories we could tell with really interesting characters. Yeah. We live off that for a yeah. while. But I, they won't do that, but that's that's what I would do. I don't know, Brian. They could do that. They need to not... I mean, I, if you're Kevin Feige, I'm pretty sure he, they, he, he's going to stick to the plan because it's worked, right? Uh, there's not much to change because it's his vision at the end of the day, really, right? It's just his thing. is what he wants. And but at the end of the day as well, Brian, is he's saying these joints is dope and we're saying, nah, you bugging. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like, come on, Kev, this is this is not this is not this is not uh Marvel phase one, phase two, phase three, obviously. But it's not that feeling. It's not that feeling of excitement. No, I mean, look, I mean, I am early. I'm way early with this comment, but like, there's a there's a whiff of Bill Belichick in the air here, a whiff. Okay. This is the legend, the man who's won more than anyone else. <laughs> but lately, <laughs> Patriots haven't been much of a factor the last couple of years. And there's been some weird decisions being made up in New England, right? And they're yeah. kind of not what they were, but we still treat Bill Belichick as the GOAT, which he is. Yeah. Kevin Feige is the GOAT. No one's coming for that title anytime soon. Yeah. But if we're being honest, you know, like how many, you know, you're Bob Iger. How many more, like how many more of these, like you start to string together movies that are rotten critically not well received you start to string together movies that are profitable but not massively so start to string together like the pr is kind of like um I'm, I'm a little more interested in that superman movie what's going on over there that sounds kind of interesting let's try that let's try that shop down the street what are they up to how many more of those do you need before bob Iger has a conversation with kevin feige and says yo somebody gotta lose their job right now if it's not gonna be you then who's it going to be? Nate Moore, Victoria Alonso? Who, who's going to lose that? Somebody's got to go and be held accountable because we're not delivering to the level the audience expects. I'm just saying, are we? I don't think we're there yet, but I'm just saying, I'm floating this that like if this continues down this path, at some point there's got to be change. And the change is not going to be actors and directors. The change is going to be That's on the tough. production side and the creative side. Yeah. And if it's not Kevin himself, then somebody under him has got to go quite honestly sometimes a new touch is needed brian maybe kevin feige has reached his peak in terms of delivering compelling stories i'm willing to wait a little bit longer just because i feel like we know he was stretched too thin in the chapek era and the reality is we aren't fully removed from what the Chapek era was producing, right? Quantum Mania was shot and filmed kind of during that leadership. So I am willing, that's why I say I'm early with this comment, because I do want to see, I want to see the fruits of projects that haven't gone into production yet, but will kind of post this change to see if there is a change. 
but he's i think i think they're running out of time man like i think they're running out of time to be because the at the same time i'm like we've talked about the dc stuff and we'll continue to talk about it but it, like it has never been more there for them no of course dc they have nothing but upside but when you say they're running out of time brian i have to ask what sort what time are we talking about how much time are we talking about how many more movies are we talking about? I think it's like I said. I think it's an Avengers movie that basically fails at the box office, right? To me, that's the like that's the Rubicon. Like you can't, you you. As I said, we saw it with Justice League when Justice when BVS was disappointing. That didn't end. That didn't yeah. end the progression, right? Man, it was yeah. just when Justice League went to the theaters and failed. Yeah, that's what brought about the change. Yeah. So I apply the same logic. If it, if an Avengers movie goes to the box office and is south of a billion dollars, or way way off the expectation, that's where things will really change. So yeah, that's a couple years. But that's why I say for if they want to avoid that, I think they'd be better off pushing those back to give themselves more time to rehab the image and the excitement. So when was, so when is Kang Dynasty supposed to come out? 2025? Uh, summer of 2025 in between Superman Legacy and the Batman Part 2. Wait, right uh, about now, I'm taking DC. It DC is space. crazy to say, Brian that they are gonna move for DC. I don't care who you are. There were some dudes that I used to listen to that talk about, there's no way these guys are going to move their 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 uh, uh, date because of it. Yes, they will. Because obviously, you know, to us, 2025 is right there, yo. We're in 2023, yo. 2025 movies shoot in 2024. And this scale, you're one year away from these movies having to go in front of a camera. That's and yet, not a lot of time. And yet, that that hype is not there, yo. The hype is not there, really. That's why I'm saying. That's what I said. What I said last in the last show. The second, the second one, uh, the second uh, post credit scene was better. Than, I liked it better than the first. But I'm not. It's like, you know. You got this Fantastic Four film, Brian, and you've mentioned in the previous podcast that they had a problem writing this family aspect. Are they going to run into the same issue with Fantastic Four? Because that is one of the issues, Brian, that we've said over and over again that they haven't, they've never gotten this right. And we can't go into this film not having fixed that. Like, and you got you got to be honest about like these projects. Like, it's been a bumpy road getting them off the ground. Like, Fantastic Four has already had a director's change. Like, that's happened. Blade has already had a director's change and a script rewrite. That's happened. Like, that's not to say these aren't salvageable, but it's not ideal. It's <laughs> not ideal. And like, look I, on the flip side, I'm, if I said to you like, what do you have more faith in that? The Penguin's going to be a great TV show and lead in to the Batman Part 2. And then the Batman Part 2 is going to be this epic follow-up. Or that Loki Season 2 is going to be excellent, but then it's going to lead where? Like, I think you would trust the Bat... I think you trust Matt Reeves more right now. How's he? And if the Penguin hits it on the screws and Colin Farrell wins, an Oscar, wins his Oscar this year, and that show, as he's saying is the direct lead in to part two and everyone's like give me part two right now <laughs> that movie's gonna come into 2025 with a lot more buzz than avengers kang Dynasty. oh hell's yeah straight up and we can't have that at the if you're an mcu exec or whomever you're you can't have that but it's gonna happen if you keep that date which you're saying they're not gonna keep it and it's gonna be or, or you think they should move it back to Absolutely. what 2026 i mean for me i'd go longer but yeah i think you start i mean mm -hmm. films films push films push one year at a time basically six six to 12 months you generally see films move back in six to 12 months increments you're not going to move this film back to, to christmas so it's going to go to the following summer so i think it would go to summer 2026 secret wars 
uh, would go to summer 2027. How, how, but how much further back would you, if it were you, how much further you would push this back, Brian? Well, so what I would say to you is, I think they need to look at their own history, right? I mean, like, you know, Iron Man 1 to Avengers 1 was five years, basically. Iron Man 1 to Infinity War was 10 years. You are asking us basically to go from wherever you want to put the flag for the start of the clock. They're saying it's now. I mean, if you want to take them at their word, Quantum Media, you know, in February 2023, and you're telling me you want to do the Avengers movie in two years? And you want to have the culmination movie be in three? I mean, you just did it in five and ten. Like, that's not even the same universe of pace. One of the things, Brian, I had said quite some time ago that the platform of having Disney Plus would accelerate these major events in film. And this is what seems to be happening, but yet the problem we're running into is that we're getting some of this content. We're getting to these major events, but that excitement and that hype has is gone because of the stories that you've been telling. I, am I right with that, Brian? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I think also you're, <clears throat> I think Marvel also needs to be careful too, that they are trying maybe a little too hard to recapture certain moments that worked as opposed to trying to write new great moments, right? Yes. I heard Kevin was making a reference. We know, for example, the Secret Wars thing, Kevin's trying to recreate basically the, the, the effect of the portal scene in Endgame. And I think that's a mistake. Like that moment will, should never, you should just put that in the Hall of Fame, enjoy it, and never try to replicate it because yeah. you'll fail. You yeah. can't, it's already been done once. Yeah, yeah. Similarly, he was out talking about like comparisons to, you know, building towards something like when you first saw the Avengers on screen in 2012. Again, great moment. It, you'll ne it'll never happen again. That was a first. Don't try to recreate that. Like, that's part of the mistake is they're looking at the past and saying, how can we recycle the effect of the past without actually generating something truly new to warrant that? Think about the time you first saw the Avengers assembled on screen. That was a huge moment. People applauded and everything like that. They tried to do the same thing in Age of Ultron. Twice. And it didn't, I mean, I didn't expect a big reaction, but you didn't get a big reaction, but you slowed it down for us to look at and, and, and admire. Yeah. And yet the, the, the same feeling wasn't there. The portal scene obviously was the first time. We never seen that before. The way you did it was beautiful, right? And now you're trying to give us, or you're saying to us, you're saying to us that you want to replicate that moment? Dude, you're, 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 you're like Tom Holland right now. Stop talking and just do what you're going to do. But I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's crazy for me to say this, but thankfully, thankfully, the DCU is here <laughs> to save the day. The Batman will wow. be here to save the day. It's crazy, right? DC is, is going to save the day. You know, and I, I do need to toss this in there to, to that point. We, we can have a different, it's not appropriate to have a full discussion of this on this show, but I will say this. There's a lot of hype around the Flash trailer. A lot of hype. People like what they saw in the Super Bowl trailer. I'm just saying, I, I know we got hair on that project to the moon and back. <laughs> But they did a good job of putting something out that got people talking. Yeah. I was talking to Tracy, and he said the same thing. He said, yo, that Flashpoint trailer looks good. It looked good. And when I saw it, Brian, I was like, ooh. And I'm telling you. And obviously, this is off on a tangent, but it's, it, you know, 
it just shows you the difference in a person's vision and how they want to do things and how want to show things and how they want to tell a story. If this movie is all that people are saying this movie is, this is going to be crazy. I, Brian, before we move, we, we wrap things up quickly. Do you think, and I and I don't believe so, and I don't think you believe so, but Tracy's talking about it and, and asking the question, do you think they're going to keep Ezra Miller after this? No, I still don't. Yeah, me I still too. do not. I still yeah. do not. Yeah. They're going to quit while they're ahead. Of course. Because the downside is real big. <laughs> you, you know, this is... <laughs> This is this is like giving Kyrie Irving a max contract for five years. You, if you think he can hold it together for five years, good luck. I got a lot of history that says otherwise. You are shaking ground. Yeah. yeah. But it, what they did that was smart was that trailer. It, it gave you a reason to care about the story they were trying to tell because they made it kind of personal, right? Which we knew he was going to try to go back and save his mom. And they gave it some weight. Like when Michael Keaton shows up, you're like, I want to see more of that. When you see Affleck riding his bat cycle, you're like, I, I want to see that set piece. I just wish they would have waited for the I'm, ba I'm Batman part. Leave that I get, I get it. Leave I get it, but they film. need, I mean, they got no choice. They got to they gotta get this project to work. And I understand why they did it. So yeah. I think that's effective. But let me throw something else in there too, which when I watched this and I was looking at Marvel and I think Marvel, a lot of these projects have gone to strange places. I don't think that's all bad, but like you have a movie like Multiverse of Madness, which went all sorts of weird places. You had a movie in Quantum Medium, which is in the quantum realm, a completely CGI shot movie. Guardians of the Galaxy obviously is going to be far out in space. The Marvels is probably going to be different parts of the universe. I think Marvel has room here, and I'm not, and maybe it's Blade. I don't know how they've rewritten it. Marvel has room here, I think, for a, a return to a very simple, grounded, heroic story. Mm -hmm. I think that would play real well right now. Something that's not John Wick in terms of content, but John Wick in terms of its simplicity, in terms of like, let's just get rid of the CGI. Let's have a streets hero who's just who an actor who just owns the screen, does cool things for two hours, and we get out of here. Yeah. And in a weird way, I think the Flash, like, sure, there's a lot of CGI, there's a lot of effects, but like, it is still like an earthbound story. Like he's yeah. still trying to save his home. And his family and i guess he's gonna redo some of the snyderverse periods to kind of, which i was a little surprised by but like it's all earthbound it's all like kind of gritty and i'm like you know that's actually kind of playing pretty well opposite the rainbow colors of the quantum realm and the multiverse and all these other places that we've been taking i don't know it's just something that i got left with watching that yeah yeah i watched it and I was pleasantly surprised. And I think they just did a good job of showing us something, A, that we've kind of never seen before. Obviously, the Zod thing, like you said, was a kind of a, was a bit of a surprise. But I want to I'm I'm curious to see how or what they do with this. Um and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see the audience score for this and the critic score for this, um, and certainly the aftermath. But Brian, the MCU future is not looking too exciting. It's looking cringy. It's looking goofy. It's looking Disneyfied. It's a great word. <laughs> I've been using that word for, for a long time Me and Tracy um, But yeah that's what it's looking Brian and it's like it's, just, it's crazy to hear Brian you hear Deadpool Rated R There's going to be a Deadpool rated R 
But these other joints, Blade, who knows what they're going to do with Punisher. Because if they're saying, yeah, it's like, you're, you're, again, you're Disney-fying these characters, but Deadpool, you're not doing why? Because someone else is really in charge or they're calling the shots. I don't know what kind of arrangements you have there. But (sighs) Brian, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. They have to change a lot. They have to change the, the tone, Brian. If they're gonna be funny, be funny. Don't just throw funny in there just to be funny. Don't throw it in like an ingredient. Make it useful. Yeah, it's it's looking. As I said, the caution. We I've been using the Justice League as a cautionary tale, but the other cautionary tale is Star Wars, right? This is what happened to Star Wars. They went from doing a Star Wars movie. They did, you know, they did a trilogy. They way back when, three movies in six years. Then they didn't do a movie for 15 years until the re-release. It was almost 20 years until the prequel trilogy. Then they waited another 10 years to do the new trilogy, which obviously wound up. But bad, inconsistent storytelling in the new trilogy put the Star Wars franchise on ice at the theater. Like, they they literally can't get a movie off the ground. They're like, we got Taika Waititi. We got Patty Jenkins. We got Kevin Feige. They can't get a single movie off the ground in Star Wars anymore because of what happened in the writer's room of the last trilogy and what it, how the fans received it. That's where Marvel is headed if they're not careful. And like, lest we forget, Rise of Skywalker made $1.1 billion at the box office. It was not a failure. Yeah. But it ended the franchise for the time being. Yeah. So that's what I mean by like, you know, another example, a different studio, Jurassic Park. Jurassic World came back after that time, and that's like whatever. The movie's fine. It's like okay, but like 1.6 billion dollars at the box office, so they make another one, which is bad. 1.3 billion. <laughs> they make a last one. They bring back all the OGs, and the box office goes down again. It barely makes a billion dollars, and now that franchise is on ice. Like, it's what happens. Like, yeah. You can't tell good stories with interesting characters. Even your OG is not going to save you. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. And meanwhile. <laughs> Come on, Superman Legacy, don't screw this up. Because if they don't screw this, I'm telling you, if they if they just keep it simple and have the right spirit of a throwback classic Superman story, Brian, I think I'm, that movie's going to go huge. I, I, I agree with you 100%. Brian, I was thinking about it, and I was like, damn, what kind of Superman do they do? The, that's why I have faith in Kevin... I mean, Kevin... That's why I have faith in Jim Gunn because of some of the things that he's saying that makes sense. The sort of Superman that you need. Someone who, a, a kind Superman, who, who, a guy that you just like, right? Something that you've been missing. Zack Snyder told his story. If you liked it, great. If you didn't, whatever. But that's not the By story. The way, mm-hmm. James, James Gunn, in his quote, which I know you're referencing, immediately put in there, Superman can't ever kill anybody. <laughs> Oops, shots fired. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying, yo. That's what I'm saying. He knows what Superman is about, but he has to make us believe. He has to give us something that I think a lot of the, a lot of the world is lacking, and that's hope. He has to give us that feeling in the theaters. And that's it. He doesn't have to overthink it. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, keep it, keep it simple. Keep it classic. With what's going on at Marvel, with the way things, with the way audiences are responding to films part of the reason they responded to top gun maverick was they kept it simple <laughs> they could have screwed that story up a hundred different ways they kept it simple they got the essence of the story the character of the world they brought it back they didn't mess around with it billion five <laughs> if you do that with superman you're gonna make a billion dollars in this climate i yeah, get if yeah. people feel like i'm going to the theater for two hours of optimism that looks visually stunning billion Billion dollars. Billion dollars off the like easy, easy. Yeah, yeah. Just look what James Cameron did. You know, I, I, another thing, Brian, that I have to say. Going, and I didn't mention it when we were talking about quantum mania, and this was that sense of exploration, being in the quantum realm. That sense of exploration was an afterthought. Yeah, it's a great point. Go ahead, just pick more on it. Because now that you say it, that's a great point. I want yeah, to come because, back to it. Go I ahead, mean, Steve. 
I mean, a lot of the things that make Avatar what it is and why people want to go to Pandora is going into that world. And I think certainly there were some stunning shots of the empire that uh, that Kang had built. Those were beautiful shots. But that, but outside of that, the quantum realm sh should have been highlighted a little more. And yet we, it was filled with characters that was like, you know, we didn't care about, to be honest, right? This, 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 this faction of people there. It's just, it's just, it just was, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a good part of it. Your thoughts on, you know, the, the, that, yeah. And you know, the sad part about it, when you mention it, that story was there to tell because Kang wanted that multiversal engine core. So they had an excuse to build a quest that would have taken them through a lot more of the quantum realm if they had been like almost like a like a detective story it was like yeah. well, we're trying to find this object he's in a race against time to save his daughter and he winds up seeing four or five different locations and meeting some weird characters and, and instead kang opened the door and he jumped right in and got it yeah <laughs> yeah but the mcu has a lot of fixing to do a lot of soul searching to do and it seems to me, Brian, that they're going to go with business as usual, but but back to the way they used to do it, and not during the era of Bob Chapek. Um, you've heard it. You heard it in Bob Iger's own words. They're giving back the power to the creatives, because um, that's where it's always really lied, right? Uh, I would chalk this up for Quantum Mania being part of that era of, of JPEG and that world of, you know, I'm pretty sure that was so far along with that film that who knows we would have gotten a different film under the era of Bob Iger, right? Um, but we'll never know. But we'll know in the next films and the next things that come up. Obviously, Secret Invasion is something that I thought should have been a movie, but it's going to be a show. Let's see how that turns out. Um, we have Guardians of the Galaxy 3. That's James Gunn thing. Brian, when we talk about that, I'm not going to probably have some good things to say about it because of, of what I've seen so far. I'm not impressed. And some of the things that I've heard regarding Adam Warlock having this baby mentality. Already, you you telling me this is going to be goofy. <laughs> so, let's see. I think the MCU is at a stage right now where similar to DC and where that they, they're letting some of these films that were already in production be done with and part of the new regime will explore these new stories hopefully better quality films but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the future of the MCU where you think are you tired I'm sh I'm feeling it I'm feeling tired, but you got to see it, right? I saw Punisher with Dolph Lundgren. I saw the Captain America movie that was horrendous. <laughs> I was looking through the internet to see if I find that Fantastic Four film. I've seen it all, you know, because I like superhero films. But damn it, I'm not going to tell you a superhero film was dope if it wasn't, you know? So let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. And uh, we'll see you next time on the NerdGen Report.